<laughs> okay. Well, good day. <laughs> it's one day after the big freeze that we just had regarding um, some record-breaking cold and record-breaking wind chills, not only in Massachusetts, but across New England. Apparently, in yesterday in New Hampshire, the top of Mount Washington broke a record. It achieved 108 degrees below zero on the wind chill factor. That's similar to what's found on the planet Mars. So, what's today's video about? All right, we have a collaboration assignment uh, regarding hypothermia. And what is hypothermia? Hypothermia is basically body heat loss that's greater than the body's ability to replenish it. So in other words, your body is doing everything it can to produce a 98.6 degree average body temperature. When it starts falling below that, now the body starts to malfunction and there's a point where basically you die. And there are basically three to four stages of hypothermia. You have basically your mild, moderate, and then severe. Once you start getting into that moderate to severe, you have to have somebody else take care of you. Because at that point, one of the things that does happen is that your brain tends to shut down. So how can you alleviate that problem? Well, I'm out here in the woods on some private property where I can, uh, I have permission to do such things. All right. I just erected a simple shelter using a space blanket. And this is it right behind me here. You're probably saying, what do you mean? Why would I do this? Well, this simple space blanket is basically, it's mylar. In other words, it's uh, a layer of aluminum foil sandwiched between two layers of uh, plastic. And it reflects body heat, but it can also reflect heat from other sources. As you can see, I made a body length fire over here. And it's hot enough where the radiant, uh, you know, um, radiant energy from that fire is coming towards me and it's reflecting off of this. Now, some people call this a uh, super shelter. Well, I didn't make a complete super shelter. A complete super shelter would involve putting a piece of plastic over the front, all right, which would act as kind of like a kind of like a mini greenhouse, okay? So again, one of the things that you should have, and we discussed this in your uh, one of the other uh, lessons on having a winter safety kit is in your outdoor kit, if you happen to go outdoor somewhere, is to have one of these space blankets. I've had this thing since I was a kid. So this thing is well over 40 years old. And it's still surprisingly durable and it works because even though it's probably in like 30 something degrees out now, I'm out actually just wearing, you know, in a wool insulated shirt. All right, well, I should say, you know, a long, long underwear top. And then I have this, you know, fleece pullover and I also have my usual wool pants, okay? And I'm actually very comfortable. Now, and, that, and what it is is that this fire is radiating a lot of heat and it's reflecting off of this. And again, I didn't really brace this up because it's kind of like an impromptu thing. So anyways, when we have our collaboration, we're gonna discuss, you know, the factors that lead to hypothermia. Okay, and some of the factors that can lead to hypothermia is inadequate clothing, uh, getting wet, because if you're wet, you lose body heat approximately 50 times faster than air. So if you have cold, if you, well, I should say, if you have wet clothing on, and especially if it's cotton, it's going to conduct body heat at a much rapid rate, a much more rapid rate, I should say. And so what ends up happening is, you run into some problems, okay? Now, what do you do? Well, first thing, you try and get out of that wet clothing, if possible, wring it out, and then try and dry it off. And then the next thing is, you know, do, do whatever you can to build a fire. Again, I built this fire. I'm not in any kind of danger, but I just want to demonstrate what you do. And also, in my day pack, I usually have my survival blanket so I can rig it up as a shield. And it's going to, re and again, it's going to reflect that body heat. So, again, that's one of the factors that can lead to hypothermia. All right. When it, and then there's, um, and then you can, there's also the wind chill scale. Okay. So, again, the factors that, you know, what are the causes of hypothermia? Wet clothing inadequate clothing when it's uh, below a certain temperature, okay? Wind chill, um, 
and, and not being aware of what's going on because at, f at first you just start getting chills and you start shivering and then you go into the mild stage. And one of the things that happens in the mild stage of hypothermia is the body wants to retain heat to the internal organs so it robs it from the extremities. So you're gonna have cold, maybe even clamp, you know, like cold grayish hands, okay? In addition, oh, I got some cuts here, oh well. Um, it also robs heat and blood from your head, what's in your head, your brain. So you start becoming uh, a little less cognizant or thoughtful. And then once you get into that, you know, moderate to severe range, now you're in trouble because at that point, generally you can't think your way out of it. That's why it's very important to go out. If you go out somewhere to always have a partner. That way they, you can kind of keep an eye on each other. And so, again, we're going to go, we're going to delve into this uh, in greater detail. But again, one of the best things you can do, build a body length fire. That fire is a little about six feet long. All right, I, I gathered a lot of wood and I let it burn down into a pile of ash and I can feel the heat rating off of it. And then set up your survival blanket so that it uh, reflects that body heat. So... Let's keep that in mind, and then we'll go through the whole lesson uh, for all you people in CMA, okay? So uh, see you Thursday morning, okay? Take care.